Hi, and welcome to our presentation on CoWriter Universal, voice typing across websites and applications. Um, the topic of this presentation is um, looking at voice typing beyond just voice typing in Google Docs, which is available to all of our students because Google Docs has voice typing in it. But there's some characteristics of the co-writer program that help make it more versatile for our students. And we wanna make sure that you know what it is that you can be doing with it. So we're gonna do a screen share and start looking at some of these tools here and see what we can do. Let me share my computer sound because it's going to be important to kind of differentiate the things that Google can offer you within their platform and what can be supplemented by the um, use of CoWriter. So you can see CoWriter is a an extension of their Google Chrome. It's available to every student and teacher and staff person in Tomball School District, along with Snap and Read, which is a reading support and also a um, uh, writing support to some degree. So we're going to be looking at these two programs and how they complement the writing process for our students who have accommodations. So let's go ahead and first open up a Google Doc. So I'm going to open up a blank Google Doc and we'll look at how voice typing happens in Google Docs. Let me clean this one off real quick and we will start again at the beginning. So this is CoWriter. This Two. is the CoWriter box and, and you can see that we have it activated because the icon is blue. If I was to turn it off, that box would disappear. Okay, so let's just look first at Google Chrome and what's available in the Google Docs. If we go to tools and voice typing, we can then begin to type using our voice in our document by clicking on the microphone. I like to speak to type because it makes it a little bit easier for me, period. So you could see I had 100% accuracy in what it was that I said and what it was that I, what was typed. So that's a good thing. However, if I have dyslexia or some other difficulty reading and perhaps I am, um, excuse me, uh, perhaps I am trying to write a story and maybe using some higher level vocabulary that I understand but I can't really spell, it might be hard for me to check what it was that I've done. So let's turn on our co-writer and make sure in our options that we have speak after speech to text activated here. And then when I go into my document, I can try again. So we're gonna turn off the Google we're going to turn on the co-writer and you'll see that their microphone is right down here in the corner and I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to type. I mean, I'm going to speak. The hypotenuse of a triangle The hypotenuse of a triangle. So you can see that it will then speak back what I had just said. Um, and I can make sure that it's correct by listening to that speech to text. It did not do that with the Google uh, voice typing. Now, if we think about it, just in the interest of full ex ex disclosure, we're going to look at our snap and read, which is turned on over here in the sidebar along the right. And I can click on that and I can then have my I like to speak to type because it makes it a little bit easier for me. And you can see that it will read back and it'll keep reading back until I stop it with a click of my mouse. So the the difference, the main difference between voice typing in co-writer and voice typing in Google Chrome in, in Google Docs is that when you use CoWriter, it automatically will do the speech read back if you have that option activated in CoWriter. And if you don't, then um, you have to use your snap and read to do that.
Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is Google Slides. So let's go back to our regular co-writer. Let's go back here and I'm going to pull up a, a Google Slides presentation, a blank one. So in, in Google Slides, what we'll see as far as in the tools for voice typing is that the student can type their speaker notes in there. So let's click on speaker notes and we're going to go down here and we're going to say this presentation is to introduce myself to the new students um, coming in from summer vacation. This presentation is to introduce myself to the new students coming in from summer vacation period. Again, 100% accurate. I don't know that for a fact because I have dyslexia and I'm having trouble reading some of those words. I can go to my snap and read and click. This presentation is to introduce myself to the new students coming in from summer vacation. But if I did it vacation, if I did it in co-writer, so let's turn our co-writer back on. We didn't get to go anywhere very fancy this summer, so there's not a whole lot to write. period. We didn't get to go anywhere very fancy this summer, so there's not a whole lot to write. Okay, so but up here, if I want to do voice typing, let's see what happens if I turn my co writer off. It says it only works in speaker notes. So let's see. All about me. Do you see that it wrote it down in the speaker notes? It didn't keep it up there where I had clicked my mouse to write the text. But if I do that with my co writer, I'll turn that back on. And then I click in my text. All about, oops, sorry. <laughs> All about me. All about me. It will put my text in there. So I can use the voice typing in my Google Slides and it will give me that read back so that I can have that read back. Again, so Google, um, the Google tool in Slides will work in the speaker notes, but it won't work in the actual slides and it won't read back unless you use co uh, snap and read but if you use your co-writer it will read back what it is that you've spoken when you turn off your microphone so you can go through and prep your slides and your presentation with your text just by speaking those things Okay, so now we're going to go to the next tool, and that is going to be Gmail. And sometimes we have difficulty um, writing our emails because we have difficulty with writing in general. And so emails are another place that you can use your co-writer because there are no uh, voice typing tools for your Gmail. So we're going to go ahead in our uh, co-writer and I'm going to click on my microphone. egarzaot at gmail.com egarzaot at gmail.com Okay, so that didn't work so well, but I can fix it pretty easily and I can see that familiar at sign is not there. 
And so then we have access to the um, body of the email. This weekend, I would really like to go to San Antonio to check out the river walk and enjoy some music, period. This weekend, I would really like to go to San Antonio to check out the river walk and enjoy some music. So you can see there that you can use it in your emails. Um, that means you can also use it in your uh, other applications that are in a tab. So that might be your social media, doing Facebook or, um, you know, doing a Twitter account or whatever that you would be able to speak your text in. And then when you click your microphone off, your co-writer is going to read that back to you. So just keep in mind that there's a variety of things that you can do in your, in your different programs on your computer browser using co-writer that will open up voice typing to you. And then the second piece of that is that option again that speaks after the speech to text so that you can confirm that indeed what you had written is going to be uh, what you what you meant to say is what has actually been written and that you um, are sending out the information that you wanted to send out. So I hope that you found this as a helpful way to increase your use of the curriculum access tools that have been provided by the school district. If you have any questions about this, feel free to give me uh, an email or call me at extension 4138. So my email is Eileen Garza at tomballisd.net and I am in the Department of Student Support Services. Thank you very much.